So today in class, you and your group came up with um, a list of the things that your body needs to do in order to stay alive. Called necessary life functions. So let's look at those. The first one is maintaining boundaries. Now most people don't get this one in these in, as this phrase. Um, it's almost too obvious. Like, of course, your inside of your body is separated from the outside of your body, and um, the inside of your stomach is separated from your esophagus and your intestines. And of course, the inside of a cell is separated from the stuff outside a cell. But as we get along in this, you'll see just how important these things are, and you'll know some of them anyway. So keep things separated, one organism from another, organs from each other, and cells from each other. Okay, metabolism. Now, we often you hear the word metabolism with respect to, oh, somebody who's thin has a really high metabolism, or someone who's heavy must have a low metabolism. But it's actually more than that. It's the sum total of all chemical reactions that take place in your body. One of the, um, one of the ones that requires the most energy to do is ATP production. So let's just take a look at this little video. Our body is made up of trillions of cells. They all require energy to function. This energy is created within our cells, in the mitochondria. Here, food is converted into chemical energy called ATP. ATP is released by the mitochondria, so cells can use it. Mitochondria consist of two membranes, an outer membrane, separating it from the cytosol, and an inner membrane, surrounding the so-called matrix. The area between these membranes is called the intermembrane space. ATP is generated at the inner membrane of mitochondria by an efficient mechanism called oxidative phosphorylation involving several membrane protein complexes. Um, I'm not going to require that you understand the membrane complexes that result in ATP production, but I hope you notice that they did talk about um, the boundaries that separate different things because different actions or functions take place in different areas. Right? So then there's responsiveness, which you probably at least implied in um, some of the things that you came up with for necessary life functions. But when things in the environment, whether it's an internal or external environment, when things change, your body has to sense these and then respond to them in some way. So I found this video. I thought it was cool. Take a very close look at this statue. Pay attention and don't look away. Did you just jump back? Did your muscles tense? If so, that's because your brain comes equipped with a primal fight or flight response to danger. And it's rare that your brain can override it, even at times when danger isn't really present. Like in this unique experiment we've designed to test fight or flight responses. We brought in a team of makeup artists to transform our actor into an inanimate statue outside Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas. And then we set up cameras to see what happens when our statue suddenly comes to life. <sighs> this should make a nice souvenir vacation picture. But watch out for the photobomb. <laughs> they weren't the only ones to react. Watch what happens to this curious cat. These ladies picked the wrong bench to take a break from shopping. <laughs> Notice how most people are responding with the flight part of fight or flight. Person after person jumped back in fright. The thing is, they're not actually making a decision to flee or fight. It happens instinctively. So what do you think will happen when we scare someone whose instinct is to fight rather than flee? Is someone about to knock our statue's block off? 
I've been to Las Vegas for a teacher thing, but, um, and I had no idea st statues like this actually existed. Uh, so I'm, you know, sitting somewhere just sort of taking a rest and taking a break and, and I'm looking at the statue and I kind of look away and then I look back and the statue's in a different position. I'm like, what is going on? So it's pretty funny. Anyway, so movement. Um, so obviously, well, not obviously, but I'm assuming that most of you, when you think about movement, think about your body actually moving from one place to another. Um, so in that respect, we're looking at this contortionist, which we'll only look at for a few minutes, but I've always been fascinated by people that can bend their by people that can bend their bodies in this way. Hello. Hello. What's your name? I'm Lucky. Okay, Lucky. Right. What are you going to do? I'm going to sing and play guitar for you. I just don't know what to do with myself. Everything for you. I just don't know what to do. think that's wild but anyway so in addition to external movement there's all kinds of stuff that's just moving inside your body uh, so I th found this um, I don't actually know what it is it's like an x-ray so let's just look at that so I think that's okay so cool. I just want you to look straight ahead at the wall and say candy candy this, candy this Great. Is a I'm gonna give you the cup this right is there. a barium liquid I just want you to take one sip and swallow Great. Just take a couple sips in a row like you're thirsty. And barium stuff tastes nasty. Well, okay. it tastes like chalk. Good. All right, I'm going to give you a teaspoon of some pudding. I want you to swallow that when you're ready. Oh, that's so, I just think that's really cool. I'm going to give you your nuts. Just chew that up and swallow. One more. Okay. Oh, you can see the um, epiglottis right there. Nice. That's awesome. Anyway, stuff moving in your body. Uh, so your blood is one you might think of, um, air moving in and out of your body, um, food moving through your digestive tract, cerebral spinal fluid moving inside. Um, anyway, so movement is one of them. All right, development, growth, and reproduction. I put these together simply because they all require mitosis, um, aging and you know, development of the fetus and stuff. And I know you know about mitosis from um, from bio, and we're not going to go through the whole thing again, but I just think it's kind of cool to watch. So there's the chromatin. And this is sped up a lot. And the chromatids. Now you can see the pairs, and now they're lining up. And any second now. There we go. I just think mitosis is so cool. Cool. Anyway, and um, I really like this reproduction of the organism. Um, and you can see the little baby foot sticking out there. And I just think that's really cool. Um, anyway, so development, growth, and reproduction. Digestion. Now, I, show, I picked up this 
video or I picked out this video um, because it takes sort of this thing that has lots of different parts in your body and it breaks it down into something very simple. Here's an amoeba um, and it has engulfed two paramecium. So let's watch. Okay, so it's spreading out endocytosis, right? It's bringing it all in and then the, um, the vacuoles with the digestive enzymes get in there and oh no! Digesting the poor little paramecians. But now, or in a few seconds, it will be in a position. Yeah, so now it's in, into a form that the amoeba can actually use to make energy. Okay, the next one is excretion. Now, Excretion, the three primary ways that we excrete stuff um, is through sweating, urination, and exhalation. Excretion means what you're getting rid of are products of chemical reactions. Okay? So that's how you that's how you get rid of them, the sweating, the urination, and exhalation. Okay. Excretion is not the same as pooping. Now, are there some excretory components to poop? Yes, um, old red blood cells and some other stuff. But what you release when you have a bowel movement is not stuff that was ever in your body used for a chemical reaction. So it's really not metabolic waste. And so pooping is not excretion. All right, so to sum up everything we just went through, necessary life functions include organization and maintaining boundaries, metabolism, responsiveness, both internal and external, movement, internal and external, development, growth, reproduction. Another one that I might throw in there is repair. So if you get a, an injury, mitosis is there to help heal you. Um, digestion and excretion. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, bring them to class and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.